Good evening. Good evening. I'm very happy to see all of you this evening. Um, so uh, 51 years ago today, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered the address, Beyond Vietnam, Time to Break the Silence, before a crowd in the historic Riverside Church in Harlem. In his remarks that were written by his comrade Vincent Harding, he describes his coming to take up a public position against the U.S. war in Vietnam. And then one, later, one year later to the day, on this day, 50 years ago, King was assassinated in Memphis, where he was planning a second march in support of the Memphis sanitation workers. So on this anniversary, a really momentous anniversary, we gather to think about King and probably more properly the movements um, in which he was involved. And those movements were comprised of thousands of people working in the interests of gaining basic necessities, dignity, self-determination. We gather to remember the ways that impoverishment and subjugation of the most marginalized communities here in the U.S. is intimately tied to this country's militaristic and imperialistic adventures, imperialist adventures around the globe. And we gather to affirm that ending the U.S. war machine is essential to all of our health and well-being. So in a speech he gave a couple months before this very famous Beyond Vietnam address, uh, King outlined some of the core casualties of the war on Vietnam. He noted, the second casualty of the war in Vietnam is the principle of self-determination. By entering a war that is little more than a domestic civil war, America has ended up supporting a new form of colonialism covered up by certain niceties of complexity. Whether we realize it or not, our participation in the war in Vietnam is an ominous expression of our lack of sympathy for the oppressed, our paranoid anti-communism, our failure to feel the ache and anguish of the have-nots. It reveals our willingness to continue participating in neo-colonialist adventures and that's from a speech called Casualties of the Vietnam War. It was delivered to the Nation Institute in Los Angeles in February of 1967. So there'll be many celebrations and commemorations of King's legacy during this 50th anniversary, and I, I think that's a good one. Right? Uh, the movements with which he's associated merit really thoughtful examination and really rigorous and joyous celebration as well. This evening, CPE, Center for Political Education, brings together a really esteemed group, an esteem like high in our thinking and in our spirit and comrades that we're happy to work with. A group of people who are dedicated to the legacies of third world liberation and anti-imperialism to help us consider the challenges that King posed at the end of his life regarding taking seriously the concerns of the poor and the working class, his challenges to war and militarism, his commitment to eliminating the violence of racism, and we want to elevate his internationalism. This pillar of King's legacy, this internationalism and anti-imperialism, is what we're hoping to uphold this evening. So it couldn't, for all of those reasons, be a more serendipitous time for Vijay Prashad to be in town. Um, we're always very excited to hear from BJ and me in conversation with them, and even better to see you in person, I think, BJ. BJ's unwavering commitment to people's struggles for self-determination against the ravages of capitalism, colonialism, imperialism, and racism is an inspiration for us at the Center for Political Education. It informs our programming and really shapes, in a lot of ways, how we move. He's also one of the most prolific observers and analysts of people's liberation movements worldwide that I can think of. And it's like, not a day goes by that there's not like a new essay, or a new interview, or a new book, or a new, or a new anthology. And I'm so grateful for that, because I think it's the sharing out in really digestible and understandable chunks that's such a crucial tool to get to our movements. Um, by way of a little bit more formal introduction to those of you who aren't as familiar with him, Vijay Prashad is an Indian historian and journalist 
and the director of Tri-Continental Institute for Social Research, which is an international movement-driven institution that's focused on stimulating intellectual debate that serves people's aspirations. It's a beautiful mission. VJ is the author of 25 books. I won't list them all here. I'll list a couple. The Darker Nation, A People's History of the Third World, and The Poorer Nations, A Possible History of the Global South. He's edited 10 volumes, including Land of Blue Helmets, The United Nations in the Arab World. As a journalist, he writes regularly for the Hindu in India, Frontline in Indian Publication, Irgun, Turkey, alternate in the United States. And um, he appears regularly on the Real News Network and Democracy Now. He's the chief editor of Leftward Books, based in New Delhi. He's appeared in two films, I did not know this, but about him, two films, Shadow World and Two Meetings. For 25 years, he was a professor at Trinity College. He's also been the Edward Said Chair of, at the American University of Beirut where he was a senior fellow of Isampar Institute for Public Policy. So this is how the evening's going to work. I'm going to stop talking, and then Vijay's going to come up, and he will share his remarks with all of us. After Vijay speaks, we'll be joined by four local organizers who I named earlier, Sabiha Basrat, Bada Kipwani, Steve Williams, and Roberta Ryan who will offer some brief responses based and rooted in the work that they do here in the Bay Area. I'll do more full introductions of all of them um, at that point, so you can revel in all their, their gloriousness more at that point. But before I turn over to Vijay, um, I just want to share another quotation from King. And this is um, from February 7th of 1968. Uh, he was, it was during a staff retreat for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in preparation for launching the Poor People's Campaign. And in the speech, he was doing an assessment of the movement and sharing that with the staff there. And it's a little bit of a long quotation, but it's got some good gems in it, so I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it, even though it's a little long, right? He says, in any social revolution, there are times when the tailwinds of triumph and fulfillment favor us and other times when strong headwinds of disappointment and setbacks beat against us relentlessly. We must not permit adverse winds to overwhelm us as we journey across life's Atlantic. We must be sustained by energies of courage or engines of courage in spite of the winds. This refusal to be stopped, this courage to be, this determination to go on in spite of is the hallmark of great movements. In the days ahead, we must not consider it unpatriotic to raise basic questions about our national character. We must ask, why are there 40 million poor people in a nation overflowing with such unbelievable affluence? We must ask, why has our nation placed itself in the position of being God's military agent on earth, <laughs> intervening recklessly in Vietnam and the Dominican Republic? Why have we substituted the arrogant undertaking of policing the whole world for the high task of putting our own house in order? For its very survival's sake, America must re-examine old presuppositions and release itself from things that for centuries have been held sacred. For the evils of racism, poverty, and militarism to die, a new set of values must be born. Let us be those creative dissenters who call on our nation, call our nation to a higher destiny, to be a new plateau of compassion, to be a more noble expression of humaneness. We are superbly equipped to do this. We have been scarred in the flames of suffering. We have known the agony of being the underdog. We have learned from our have-not status that it profits a nation little to gain the whole world of means and lose the end, its own soul. We must have a passion for peace, born out of the wretchedness of war, giving our ultimate allegiance to the empire of eternity. Thank you all for coming. Let's welcome Vijay Prashant.